Hi, this is Nubi5, this is my reflection, that's my microwave, and this is the Advent Vega. So we're going to boot this up now, from cold, and hopefully nothing's going to set on fire. So this is what is now um, test build 42, uh, which is release candidate number 2, of the latest Vegacomb 0.36 kernel test build. I'm probably not going to name it that when I release it because the file name will be too long. So we've spent a bunch of time on the ROM itself trying to put features from Baker going back in because we stripped it right back and started from a fresh ROM image. Um, and on top of that, there's been a hell of a lot of work that's gone into the kernel. Um, I can't take credit for that. That has got to go to Corvus and um, Rebel One and Cass. And Cass has been working with me a lot today on trying to get this stabilised. And it's really paid off, as far as I can tell. So, fresh boot, we've got nothing running. Everything's nice and smooth. Yay, look, it scrolls fast. That's a really good test. Uh, I've broken the market at the moment. I'm not 100% sure what I've done, but I went to install something a minute ago and it won't install anything. I don't think that's something that's, um, that's in the ROM itself. It's probably something that I've done while I've been testing, but I couldn't be bothered to reinstall. Um, I'll try installing something. Oh, so uh, oh, my Wi-Fi wasn't connected. It's not a server error. The Wi-Fi is there. Look, I can see it. So yeah, there's still bugs with this. There's still things that aren't working properly. We are connected to my Wi-Fi, so let's see why market isn't working. Okay, Mr. Market, come on, play ball. Thanks. You're really making me look good here. There we go. That was my fault. My wife always getting strange. Okay, so we got market. Market's all looking nice and shiny. I don't know if you can really tell from this, but this is already a ton faster than Vega Cone Beta 1.7, which is lovely because it's got native. We now have a proper native um, honeycomb build on the Vega. This is using all of the native NVIDIA drivers without anything hacked in to make the EGL work properly. Um, so I'm, am I going to try and install something? Yeah, let's see if we can install SmartBench. I don't think it's going to work, like I said, because I broke the market earlier. So, touchscreen is still a little spotty in the market, so let's try and ins install SmartBench. Let's see what we get. Like I say, it wouldn't install anything for me a minute ago, so it's probably going to do the same thing now. But we'll see how it goes. Got this. What a wait. Oh, it didn't store. Okay, cool. Well, that means we can run SmartBench, which is quite nice. So, this is going to be a test uh, to see how destructive I can be on this. Uh, this is a build that only came around roughly 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, I've been working with Cass today, uh, Corvus and Rebel One are away at the moment, um, but they've done a whole pile of work and they've done loads and loads of stuff. There's other guys on the forums that have been helping as well, there's A Appleby, um, a couple of other people, Billy Bob, um, can't remember all of your names, sorry, but it's all kind of, everybody's been putting their ore in on the kernel, which is great, which has allowed us to work on the ROM that's going to sit on top of it. So, again, this is the unmodified YouTube app, so this is going to run proper 720p YouTube videos. Uh, what we've got now is the kernel has been set up to use 128 megabytes of video memory. So that has a couple of balance issues here and there, but for the most part it seems to be working really, really nicely. So there we go, nice full screen. Turn the volume down a bit. Turn it up, it gets really loud. Turn this down. Okay, so let's see. I don't really know why that paused. There we go. So, again, still a little bit spotty here and there. Let's flick between a couple of videos, we'll see how it goes. The idea behind this video isn't to show you how amazing and fantastic it is, it's pretty much going to be me learning as much as you to see how much I can break this. So, let's flip, do, go and uh, launch some flash because flash is going to be what's going to kill this thing because flash seems to be 
there's just something not right about it so um, it really hammers the tablet so let's go to BBC iPlayer while it's loading let's just open another tab up if it'll let me because I still need to fix the touch screen issues there we go okay so let's launch a video See how that goes. There we are. Make it go big, please. Not like that. I'm already going to sort this touch screen thing out. There we go. Right, so full screen, BBC iPlayer, working great. Um, native browser. If you don't like the native browser, you don't have to use it. Just use something else. So let's go to YouTube in a different tab. And we'll flick between the two and we'll see how it behaves. And this stability, like I say, is really new. I've been working on this for a few days now. Uh, let's just launch that up. There we go. So, got YouTube video going. Let's flick back to the BBC iPlayer. See if that'll start up again. Yep, there we go. So, that's going. Flick back to YouTube. There we go. That's carrying on again. Let's shrink those down and we'll fire up YouTube. The actual YouTube app. Let's see if it wants to play to me. Uh, what should we pick? That one. So bear in mind, we're flicking through quite a few things here, and we're having making the memory killer and the memory management think about a lot. So sometimes, when it takes a little while to load something like this, or crash horribly, it is having to kill the background processes. <laughs> There we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's having to think quite a lot about killing what's going on in the background so it can start a new um, process up. It's because we've only got 512 megs of RAM. It's struggling. Ooh, goes a little bit loud. Sometimes when you get a little bit of a judder and uh, an app crashes at the moment, it when it restores itself, which it does do now, it doesn't just flat out kill the whole tablet, you'll find that the volume for some reason is crazy. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> we'll fix that at some point soon. Okay, so we're flicking between things. It seems to be working okay. Um, nothing's died, hasn't killed the tablet or anything, so we're going to run Dungeon Defenders, and let's see. Now, this is a pretty hardcore app, so from experience, if anything's going to kill it, usually this does. And then if this does actually work, we'll try running SmartBench and see how it goes. But... So we're flicking between some fairly heavy duty apps here, which is probably or possibly more than a lot of people would do. Okay, so Dungeon Defender seems to have loaded fine. And let's just wait for it to load up. I don't know if anybody here plays Dungeon Defenders, but if you do, you probably know that it is not the most lightweight app in the world. There we go. So let's just launch a game real quick. And then after this we'll launch SmartBench and we'll see what the score is. I don't have high hopes for the actual score on SmartBench, to be honest. Um, because of the way this has kind of been frigged into work. Not frigged. I mean, it is working extraordinarily well. The guys that are working on the kernel have done an amazing job. We've all pitched in. Everybody's done. Uh, everybody's been working together. We've been pitching emails around left, right and centre with ideas and, and everything that's going on. So it's been working quite nicely. There we go. So Dungeon Defender's working beautifully. I was playing this earlier, I haven't had a single problem with it. So, there we go, let's come out of Dungeon Defenders. And we'll run Smart Bench and then I'll call it a night, but I think probably everybody can agree, so far anyway, 
this is pretty unkillable. So Smart Bench is going to run sideways, so turn your head to the left, please. Now I'm going to come back to the mode turned on. I was just opening Smart Bench Crash. Well, wouldn't that be cool? Oh. Oh, it's just. Oh, Smart Bench has crashed. Just try it again, see what happens. Well, I didn't actually close, did it? <laughs> so there we go, like you say. Like I said, it's, um, it's still not perfect. I'm not really sure why. This has decided to go on a bit of a strange one because it's not actually started doing any testing yet. Oh, now, here's an interesting point. <laughs> because the accelerometer isn't working at the moment, Smart Bench has gone sideways and actually flipped the orientation of the tablet around, and there's no way of it going back because the accelerometer isn't working. <laughs> so that's something that didn't, that didn't occur to me before. I haven't actually run Smart Bench on this before. Let's see if I'll run this time, I'll see if it crashes again. Oh no, there we go, okay, so it's running. So let's run Smart Bench and see what happens. Okay. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see what the score is when it actually comes up. My guess is, vague guess is, going to, is that it's going to be reasonably low. But that doesn't matter as much. Oh. Application Smart Bench has crashed. It's still running. What are you on about? Stop lying at me. Oh, okay, cool. Let's just run it one more time. See if it actually goes anywhere. It might not. So, we're on Smart Bench. Let's see what happens. Okay, so all the actual apps that we've tried didn't work. The Benchmark app uh, did work, sorry. The Benchmark app doesn't seem to want to. I'm not 100% sure why. But obviously we'll work on this. This is the first, what I would call, stable build that has actually come out. This is one that we haven't actually managed to freeze the entire tablet on. All previous builds, if you launch enough heavy duty apps at it, it'll fall over. Cool, let's see what that says then. Display, oh shit, go back. Display scores. Let's see what we got. Oh wow, that's low. So, 2,410 and 1,950. So that is, that is pretty low. <laughs> so we'll work on that. I mean, I don't put a huge amount of stock in uh, benchmark scores, he says, now that it's had a low score. But the we've been working, we haven't been working to get the benchmark score high, we've been working to get the tablet stable and to get everything working. I mean, you've just seen this flicking between apps, everything seems to be working quite nicely. So... Um, I'd suggest that that probably doesn't reflect the actual performance of the tablet. Yeah, I don't know, it might not help that I haven't got this in compatibility mode properly in spare parts. I, I don't know, well, I can try that later on. I'm not going to leave this video running too much longer, so I'm just going to let this finish quickly and then we'll see if it gives, you, gives us a different score. Because these benchmark tests are all, oh so reliable. Let's display scores, see if it's just as low as it was before. Okay, so we've got 2,901 that time, so that's quite a lot, um, quite a lot higher compared to the next the one below it is the Samsung Galaxy S2 clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So presumably, when this thing's actually um, clocked, overclocked, which we will be adding at some point once we're happy with the stability, then everything's going to be nice and quick on it again, which is good. I mean, we compare this, all of those ones below it are clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. We've got one point four here and a 1.3 there. So I, th I think for a one gigahertz, I think we're doing pretty damn well there actually, especially since this is extra double, triple beta. Right, so we're gonna leave that sideways.
I'm going to go because this video is going to go on really long otherwise. But there we go. There's kind of a hardish core um, launch into all of the apps on this just to test the stability. We're pretty happy with this now. Um, I haven't managed to make it completely fall over yet. There is a volume issue if the media server seems to crash and brings itself back up. It does bring itself back up quite successfully, but when it comes back up, for whatever reason, the volume is a lot higher than it really should be. So be careful if you're wearing headphones. If I do release this test um, and you're wearing headphones, please be really careful because you can't sue me um, because I won't let you. Okay then, bye-bye.